Hi, and welcome to Journey to Journeyman number 11. This episode is a hodgepodge where I make a few things just messing around on the lathe. I make a uh, thrust washer for the tractor, which is a fail. And I also take a, uh, some of that pop can aluminum and make another bracket. But first, guys, I'd like to give a thanks to everyone who commented uh, on number 10. Thank you so much, guys. That's a, it's such a shot in the arm to, to realize that it, I'm on the right track. Thank you so much. And a massive shout out over in Australia to Mick, whose uh, channel is MPLTM68 Spanker Fest. Uh, I can't thank you enough. He nominated me for that toolbox that, that I made that for. Uh, when I read the nomination to my wife, literally, she got tears in her eyes. Thank you so much, Mick. I appreciate that. Also, shout out to um, Matthew Walls over at Wide Vision Metal Fab. He's the inspiration on this, uh, this tool, actually the indicator holder that I made. I made one, then he, it inspired him to make one, and I looked at his changes and made a different one, and I might even make another one. So thanks a lot, uh, Matt, over there at Wide Vision Metal Fab. And last but certainly not least, Rick J. from out in sunny California. I can't thank you enough. He sent a viewer appreciation package, guys, and I'm, I'm stunned. The only other one I've ever received was actually from my brother. It was viewer appreciation, but it was my brother. This is a total stranger that uh, saw my channel and sent me some stuff. Rick, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I haven't used any of the stuff yet, but I will in upcoming episodes. Thank you so much. Well, guys, my very first real unboxing. Now, I did get a care package, but... Uh, your appreciation, but it was my brother. So this is the first non-relative that has sent me something as a viewer appreciation gift. And so here's the unboxing. I'm extremely excited. Um, never expected anything like this, but uh, I really, really do appreciate it. Let's see what we got here. Holy cow. A stare it. Wow. Excellent. A stare it um, magnetic uh, dial indicator holder. Excellent. I'm just uh, overwhelmed at the generosity. Uh, Rick J sent this to me out from Modesto, California. And I mean, this is is unbelievable um, there's so many drill bits in here I didn't even pull those out but the the end mills the uh, high speed and carbide cutters and what's really cool is some of these have been ground with a uh, like a form tool and since I don't know how to grind those I'm gonna use these just like they are uh, that's that's wonderful um, big old honking set of drill bits there and I'm not sure if these are called uh, starter drills or just stubby drill bits, but either way, I'm going to be able to use those. And that Starrett uh, dial indicator, magnetic holder, in incredible. Um, I didn't realize that this thing screws open. And inside of here is all kinds of little cutters. Just incredible. Uh, Rick, I can't, I can't thank you enough. This is... Uh, this is wonderful, and everything here is going to get used. So thank you very much, and guys, I'm excited. This is the first time, like I said, that a non-relative has uh, sent me viewer appreciation. Much appreciated, and it will be used. Thanks again. So let's get on with the machining. So let's take a look at our order of operations. Well, since this was a hodgepodge, there's really only one order of operations, which is Give a wink and a gun for the ladies. Okay, um, here's what I'm trying to do. Um, I really, really like how this works, um, this little clamping thing. And so I decided to make another one for the back of the lathe. Well, the deal is, with this one, I used all milling instead of using that four-jaw chuck. And because I figured out the mill, I <laughs> got a... Um, Got it pretty good. So anyway, uh, as I was doing this, I started thinking about 
this other project because I need a lathe, uh, a stop. As you saw in the last episode of Journey to Journeyman, I needed a, a stop and I'm using vice grip. So I thought about this micrometer stop. So what I did is I re-milled off some of this, made it fit on the lathe so that this spindle goes where it's supposed to. And so I had to take off about a quarter inch here. And now I'm thinking about a redesign on how to clamp it onto the lathe bed because now these two holes are actually over the bed so you can't clamp it with those. So I started thinking, what can I do? So I thought on this one, instead of using magnets like I did on this one, I used uh, rare earth magnets to hold this, uh, what I decided to do is maybe make a notch in here and then try to use a set screw on the top to um, to mount it on there. Doesn't make sense now, but I'll show you what I mean. Now, this is just an experiment, so um, we'll see if we can make this thing work. What I want is for the, the bed thickness is about 445 thousandths. So Well, I took that slot back a little bit further than it should go, so I'm going to have to lop off about, oh, maybe an eighth of an inch off this bottom part. And what that is, is the lip here is hitting on the, the uh, flat gear down there, and I want it to hit up against that part of the way. It'll work like this, but I like it a little bit more touching up against that way so I'm gonna mill off a little bit more of that that's what I'm looking for right there guys all right Let's see if this little concept works so I um, just put a set screw on here and basically this thing is shaped like the letter J for example like Jster and this goes on here and I know I'm going to use something soft in there, but just to test the concept, um, I see the front end lifts up a little bit, so I should have a little bit tighter of a tolerance down here, but that baby ain't going anywhere. So, proof of concept, it's, it'll work. Well, I love my uh, Popcan uh, dial indicator holder that's magnetic. But in an effort to try to make it a little bit better, I kind of screwed it up a little bit on the bottom with uh, milling it. And uh, so I decided to make another one that wasn't just magnetic, but had some mechanical properties like uh, Matt has a hit on his, Matthew has on his. So I start off with the same pop can aluminum and milled it and made this with a set screw on the top. And of course it hooks on the bottom of the bedway 
and when this pushes on it it gives a little bit of a rise on it so I thought I would make another one that would have a set screw coming from that side and it go down on the bed rail so I cut this out and I started milling it and I said wait a minute maybe some guys would like to see this because I always love to see machining so let's uh, I'll show you the rest of the machining part I only did this one side with a fly cutter and uh, Let's do some machining on it. Now this bit should be cut like a, a fly cutter, but I just took a left-handed uh, turning tool and stuck it in there. And it's cutting pretty well, but later on I uh, looked up how to grind a mill cutter a bit, and it works so much better when I did that. Well, I'm kind of stuck on this project that I'm doing here with the um, indicator mount. Just kind of thinking it out. So in the meantime, I decided to mess around a little bit. Got a little piece of irregular stock that I was going to turn into a cylinder. I said, well, let me flatten it out first and play around with the mill while it's still set up. The milling attachment, that is. So... Let's give it a shot, see what we can do with it. Once again, this is just a little piece of scrap. I turned up the RPM and just start turning it down. And then uh, I realized a little later on that I'm going to get a little bigger chunk and mess around with it. So here's that bigger chunk and what I'm thinking about doing is just trying to thread something you know with an aluminum thread to go down into that other part and just playing around messing around figuring out the machine figuring out the cutting and turning and just having fun. So right now I'm just taking it to the dimension to get it for a quarter 20 and I'm going to run a, a die over it and man I couldn't get it to work. Holy cow. Holy mackerel. <laughs> okay. Uh, that ain't going to work. This was some of the leftover metal with the stuff in it so all right uh, it was fun turning it for those of you who don't know what i mean by a double pour is when i poured some aluminum in a in a can i let that kind of harden up and then i poured another on top and i thought that would stick it together well it doesn't and that was right at the, the fault line and that's why it failed now there are multiple sessions that I'm down in the basement and I'm just playing around with my lathe and trying different things. That was the uh, knurling tool so I decided I was going to knurl something. Well it doesn't exactly fit in the collet so I stuck it in the three jaw and I'm going to go ahead and try to thread again. This thing is all chewed up and I can't get that thing to thread with the dye. So <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to start working on the other piece. Well, I was still kind of messing with designs on figuring out how to get this um, dial indicator for working on the back. And um, I'm using that J when I was messing with it. This was just kind of a tester piece, but 
I kind of like this. So I think what I'm going to do is cut off this part right here so it can slide a little bit closer if I need it to. And um, put in a set screw for the dial indicator right there. This mechanical stop on there will work, but I probably won't use it. And put two rare earth magnets um, under here. So I'm going to go do that and let's see if it works. So I chucked up an end mill because uh, that will give me that uh, flat bottom. Put the bottom in there. And now I'm going to glue in that uh, rare earth magnet. And I didn't have room for two of them, so I'm just going to use one. One of the things I'm trying to get better on is giving guys credit when they uh, help me out. And there was a guy who gave me this idea, which was to tape the magnet on there. And when you put it on your bedway, it would be perfectly flush. And I totally forgot his name, but I'm going to try to remember that in the future. One of the things that I'm looking at on here is on this reassembly. There's a little bit of a gap in there. And so on that steering back and forth. So what I'm going to do, it looks like about oh, an eighth of an inch or so, I'm going to make a bushing so that there's no play into that. I'll make that on the lathe. So I started off with the parting tool, or what I like to call Satan, and then switched to the real parting tool. the thrust washer that I made. This is the one I bought. This one fits. This one's a little too thick. Guys, a couple of quick uh, lessons learned on here. Number one, anytime you're messing around on your machine tools and just playing around, you learn stuff. So uh, it's not bad to just go turn some metal and just, just learn something from that. Also, when you're doing your engineering, if you take just a little uh, forethought in it you could save small errors and lastly until your eyeballs are totally calibrated you may want to measure before you make scrap metal but but this isn't scrap metal what this is is the starting metal of a future project that's the half full side of this and also thank you guys all the ones like I said who commented uh, once again I can't thank Mick enough over in Australia uh, Matthew Walls for the inspiration on this out in Kansas and also Rick J in sunny California for the viewer appreciation guys thank you once again also guys thank you for watching I hope to see you on the next journey to journeyman <laughs>